of people have been making videos about what their roster wish list is for the next Marvel vs. Capcom game. I thought this was an interesting question because crossovers are so unique in the fact that practically anyone or anything from a property can be included as long as it's important or relevant. And there's so many factors that goes into making a good fighting game roster and today I want to do something a bit different than some of the other creators and try to make my own roster. So the big thing is when I see people make these videos is that they don't really have a set of criteria. So for my roster I want to create a set of criteria in order to uh, kind of judge how good a character might be for Marvel vs. Capcom and also create like a few pillars of stabilization that way we can kind of have some reference points to go back to when making our roster. So I made five pillars that I believe are a good representation in order to make a good roster uh, for Marvel vs. Capcom and I'm gonna write them down right now. So the first one I have is gameplay. So gameplay is pretty simple. It's just the character's move set in the game and what archetype they follow and how that kind of correlates to how they play and how they interact with other characters in the game. Uh, I feel this one may not be as important sometimes when people are trying to look for a crossover fighter because even if uh, a character you like doesn't have the same gameplay you like, the fact you can play the character is really important too. Um, with that, you know, going into my next point, it would probably have to be Legacy. You see, with Legacy is that Legacy is built upon the previous games in the series. It's very much reliant on kind of uh, either nostalgia or kind of like a respect for what came before. Um, if Marvel vs. Capcom had never existed and the first one came out today, a lot of the characters in my list uh, would probably have to be changed because uh, they either wouldn't be as relevant or they wouldn't really make sense to put in in a modern context. Uh, my next pillar is popularity. So the thing with popularity is that it's very dependent on the context of the time period of when a game is made. Like, for example, in the 90s, the X-Men were super popular, so a lot of the games that came out at that time had the X-Men in them. Uh, whereas the Avengers, uh, they weren't heavily focused on, so you wouldn't see as many uh, Avengers picks. Or the picks that they did have uh, were pretty mainstream. Um, some of the more obscure characters have only become popular in recent years. And same for Capcom, you know, popularity uh, ch uh, shifts over time. Like uh, right now, I, I believe Resident Evil is one of Capcom's biggest IPs. And when Marvel vs. Capcom 2 came out, there was only like, I don't know, like a few Resident Evil games. And there was only one <laughs> representative in that. So, it's very context dependent. So, my fourth pillar is brand synergy. Now, now, like, if I was in charge of a game like this, I wouldn't want to make this a pillar, but being realistic to how these companies work, I think it's important to note that a lot of the choices that they pick for games like this have to do with brand synergy. What I mean by that is also the context of what's coming out at the same time. Like Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite uh, excluded the X-Men because uh, Disney really wanted to focus on all the MCU characters. And because of that, it kind of uh, created like a, a rift in the character possibilities because you'd also have to consider all these characters playing nice with each other. You know, Capcom might want to put a character in because uh, the, a game of theirs is coming out recently or they want to promote a series that's been doing well and I feel like this pillar right here is gonna influence a couple of my picks but I'm gonna try and not let it influence a lot of them because I feel if 
we were to only focus on just one of these pillars and not all of them, it would be a very one-sided tier list. And so my last, my last pillar is appropriately named the X Factor. So the X Factor is something that you can't really quantify. It's kind of like a wow pizzazz kind of thing where when uh, it could be like a wacky character um, that kind of combines gameplay and uh, that makes them popular. Or it can just be like a legacy character or like a character no one's ever thought of before. And I feel like this pillar has to be used sparingly because you can't just put in um, Wong. Well, I mean, you could. Actually, you know, I would want Wong in Marvel vs. Capcom 4, but, but that's besides the point, you know. It's, <laughs> um, the X Factor is, uh, what can make, like, it, it can make or break a character sometimes. So, with these in mind, uh, I think it's time to assemble our roster. All right, so I got the screen pulled up and, uh, I have a little list of some guidelines I have on the side that you can't see. That way I can have a little bit of structure. But yeah, so I mix. Uh, my limit for this tier list is up to 50 characters. I know this is kind of a bit on the low end compared to other people's lists, but I wanted to kind of limit myself to see what I can do with this list. And 10 of those characters are going to be DLC. Five from Marvel, five from Capcom, which I should probably add a DLC column. I think this is a good distinction, that way we can prioritize who should be on the base roster and who should be reserved or what I think uh, Marvel might save for DLC. Um, and also, I'm just going to include some uh, my personal picks of what I would like to see. So, starting off with Marvel. Uh, I feel at this point we sh the Avengers should be included, the core four of them. I feel like it would be really silly not to and almost blasphemous if we were to not include Iron Man, Captain America, ah, can't find him. There he is. Hulk and Thor. Man, there's so many characters on this list. Yeah, these are pretty important to the history of Marvel, and also just the fact that the MCU, while it hasn't been that relevant in recent years, the cultural impact of these four characters have left a really big mark on the pop culture as a whole. Uh, I haven't included Hawkeye or Black Widow yet because I don't consider them to be the four main Avengers. And I feel like we could have some more space to work with there. But going on with some Capcom characters, you know, in a similar way, I feel like if you don't include Street Fighter on this list, it, you can't take it seriously, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Street Fighter, um, it's always hard to pick which characters I should be in the series because you either want to fulfill like those pillars I was talking about, I think, of uh, gameplay, but also just the iconic nature of, um, of Street Fighter is very important. We just need to find Ryu here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, F, G, K, L, M, P, Q, R, S, Ryu. Well, there he is. Yeah, Ryu, he's your bread and butter. He's the most iconic fighting game character of all time, no questions asked. Second of which, we need Chun-Li. She's like, compared to Ken, like, Ken is almost as iconic as Ryu in my opinion, but the his gameplay um, tends to not offer too much variety compared to Ryu, like he is mainly focused on kicks and stuff, but uh, excluding Chun-Li from this would not be good <laughs> for obvious reasons. And now I'm going to include a third Street Fighter rep, 
Um, I'm going to only limit myself to a few Street Fighter characters because this is Marvel vs. Capcom. And um, you're going to see that a lot where I might have a certain bias towards a series. I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to keep this fair for all the characters involved. But um, some series I think kind of deserve to be in the next installment more for the, the kind of the pillars I listed. So... Um, we need a Street Fighter 6 representative. And the reason why we need one is that Street Fighter 6 is probably one of the most um, well-balanced, uh, well-received, and currently the most popular fighting games currently available. And if we don't have one, I feel like we're doing a disservice to both Street Fighter and also uh, Capcom. So you might think, oh, you should pick Luke. Because Luke is a, he's the face of Street Fighter 6, and I'm going to say no to that, and I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick Jamie. See, like, I feel like the spot could have gone to any of Street Fighter 6's new characters, but with Capcom, they're clearly trying to set up a dynamic with Luke and Jamie being kind of like Ryu and Ken. And I feel like since we already have Ryu, putting Luke in would be sort of redundant. And Jamie offers a bit more gameplay variety compared to Luke. He's less of a Shoto and more of like an install character. He can use his drinks and I feel like that mechanic might be interesting in uh, an MVC game. Especially if it was a 2v2 or a 3v3 format. Using those drinks while switching in between characters would be really interesting. Compared to Luke who is a lot more straightforward with how he presents himself. Alright, so one more character before we go back to Marvel, and this one, it should be so obvious that I am still upset at Capcom for not giving this man his due in many recent games, and that's Mega Man. I'm not talking about X, I'm not talking about any other version of Mega Man, um, I feel like just core Mega Man is super important to the legacy of Capcom, and not including him is such a disservice to like the history of the of the series but you know disrespect to all the Mega Man fans out there and you know there's been a history of Capcom not appreciating Mega Man and I feel like this 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 is a good step in order to change kind of that stigma so yeah Mega Man okay going back to Marvel next one I picked is uh, Doctor Strange so, Doctor Strange, he's a pretty big figure in the comics, and also the movies recently. Um, I think he's kind of a no-brainer, he's been in the past few games, and he's uh, kind of like an architect for the next phase of the MCU. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory for that one. Next one, I think, is Black Widow. It's starting to look like a little bit of a sausage fest here, so... Um, Black Widow is pretty cool. Uh, I, she plays kind of like a pivotal part of the MCU, and I was debating between her and Hawkeye, but I, I personally like Black Widow more. I might get back to Hawkeye later, but I, I think she's a cool character, and I, I'd like to see her in the game. Okay, we need to get some more iconic characters out of the way, that way we can get to the more interesting picks. The next one is also super obvious. If your game doesn't have this and it's named Marvel vs. Capcom, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, gotta go with uh, Spider-Man. So Spider-Man, you know, he's very iconic to the MVC series. There's not a lot of other Spider-Man characters besides Venom, but I'm gonna get back to that later. All right, um, one more Marvel character and we'll switch back to Capcom. So. The next person I picked, also super iconic, uh, if they didn't include him, there would be riots on the streets and, um, oh die, put him near the top, it would be Thanos. Thanos, I don't need to say anything about him, he could have a, some really cool mechanics if they don't focus on the Infinity Stones again. Uh, yeah, Thanos. Alright, going back to Capcom. So I have a couple of characters in mind. Uh, so, you know, I established Resident Evil is pretty big these days, so I believe that Jill should be there. 
uh, she was excluded from Infinite, but I feel like uh, with her being in uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake and just her general importance to the series, I feel like she should be one of the kind of the mainstays to Marvel vs. Capcom. In a similar vein, this man has been shafted way too many times, and I'm talking about Leon Kennedy. Where is he? Leon S. Kennedy. It is honestly baffling how he and Mega Man haven't made an appearance in the recent Marvel vs. Capcom games. Like, I get Chris is pretty cool, I like his character, but Leon is just so iconic. He is... Ev every Resident Evil game that has Leon in it, he's like... He carries it in some aspect. Like, Resident Evil 4 Remake is considered one of the greatest remakes of all time, and Resident Evil 2 Remake is also considered to be super good. Like, this man is... He, he's iconic, you know? I would really love to see him have some moves from Resident Evil 4, um, some roundhouse kicks, pull from the original and the remake. It would be super cool. So, and maybe he could have a mechanic with this briefcase or something. Uh, that might be too complicated, but I'm just spitballing some ideas. <laughs> Okay, so, next on my list, Phoenix Wright. I, this is a personal pick that I really am passionate about. I love Ace Attorney. Ace Attorney is one of those games where I feel it's really iconic to just gaming in general. Um, you can't really, un I can't really understate how important Ace Attorney is. Uh, just for visual novels, but Phoenix's gameplay is so, so unique, and his legacy is so storied in unique scenarios and everything that not having him in the game kind of takes away a little bit of that texture from Marvel vs. Capcom, and uh, I really want to see him back. I hope he makes a return. So the next Capcom rep I have is Mike Hagar. Uh, I feel like he's also a bit of a legacy pick. If I can find him. J. 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 Jameson. Spoiler alert, he's not on my list, but I just I just found it funny he's here. Actually, you know. I'm gonna get back to him actually. That that would honestly be a really funny pick. Okay, so Mike, 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 Mike. Oh, duh, he was under the H's. Yeah, Mike Hagar, you know, uh, he's a good kind of analog for Zangief because we don't want to have too many Street Fighter reps or else it's just going to be um, Marvel versus Street Fighter. Uh, he plays very similar, but he also, uh, I feel like including him would be cool because in Street Fighter VI, he's no longer the mayor of Metro City. In a similar vein, I was debating between picking him or Cody but uh, I might get back to Cody later, but uh, I feel like Hagar is a pretty iconic character for Capcom. I'm gonna do two more Capcom characters and we'll get back to Marvel. So, next one was in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and this one is also, I feel like, uh, non-negotiable, uh, especially in recent years, and that's the Monster Hunter. I feel like Monster Hunter has been such a big deal these past couple of years, and uh, it really started hitting its stride on um, the 3DS of all things, and now it's on all the consoles, and uh, uh, I've only played a little bit of Monster Hunter, but I enjoy it, and I feel like they do add a lot of uh, variety to the game. So um, I feel like it would be cool if they're different uh, skins or different armors, and maybe they have a different design from last game to coincide with the, the new one that's coming out. And I'm sure that stuff Capcom would figure out already, but it's just nice to bring up. Alright, next one. This one's more of a legacy pick for Marvel vs. Capcom and for uh, Capcom in general, which is... Uh, the series is not exactly the most active these days, and that's Morrigan. You know, you can't have a MVC game without her. Um, not much to say here. Uh, I think she's pretty cool. Though, uh, it would be nice to see some more other um, Darkstalkers representatives in the future. On the Marvel side, 
I got some, uh, got some more picks here. We got, uh, Miss Marvel. I was choosing between Captain Marvel or Miss Marvel, but I personally like Miss Marvel more. I feel like her ability, um, stretch and, uh, also, well, her MCU version is a little different, but I feel like it would add some cool variety to the game, and um, she might cross wires with some other character in the future I'm going to bring up, but I'm going to explain why I'm going to include both. And speaking of which, I am going to include Mr. Fantastic. Now, both of these might have um, kind of a, a similar gameplay, but let me explain. So. Spoiler alert, I'm including Doctor Doom on this list, and I believe that the Fantastic Four are such a unique property in that their villain appears more often than they do. Like, uh, literally in Fortnite right now, as I'm recording this video, uh, Doctor Doom has his own season, and none of the Fantastic Four are skinned so far. They appear kind of as like Easter eggs in the game. It's just Doctor Doom. And he already appeared in, like, a previous season of Fortnite. And same with Marvel vs. Capcom. He's he's had, like, two games where he's appeared, and none of the Fantastic Four have appeared. And it's just so funny to me that this keeps happening. Like, he has transcended the Fantastic Four, and he's just Doctor Doom. He, do he doesn't need um, anyone else. And I, I just find that hilarious. But anyway, uh, I feel like they could make... Mr. Fantastic more of like a dull sim kind of playstyle, and Miss Marvel more of like a, oh she's like shrinks her uh, she makes her fist bigger something like that kind of the differentiate between them if there's too much similarity between them I I think they should just replace Miss Marvel with Captain Marvel but uh, that's this is what I personally would like to see speaking of the Fantastic Four and my rant about Doctor Doom. Uh, Doctor Doom. Uh, Doctor Doom is so iconic to the series, and I love his gameplay. I like playing as him in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And having him and Reed Richards in the same game is something that I feel like should have happened a long time ago. Uh, I feel like the Fantastic Four shouldn't all be in one fighter. I feel like they're all unique enough to be their own separate fighter. The thing is with, like, with Sue and... Um, and Johnny, it's, uh, I feel like there's a little bit less space to work with there, but seeing the thing in the game, uh, instead of Mr. Fantastic would also be cool, but I think Doctor Doom is pretty non-negotiable. <laughs> uh, this one, this is, this is a new pick that I'm going to explain, and I feel like it's going to be pretty reasonable. There's a lot of characters I wanted in this spot, but I feel like having Scarlet Witch in the game? is is a good idea for for a couple of reasons well uh with the mcu uh, scarlet witch has uh gotten so many different roles you know wandavision multiverse of madness and and in those roles she's kind of set up future events that are going to take place with vision and stuff with the multiverse and she's obviously going to return right like no one believes that she died in the last movie and I believe that it's it's very uh, it's very cool. She would have a really cool skill set. Um, there's a lot of room to work with her powers. She has a connection to Magneto and like the rest of the X-Men too. And she just she's just in the center of all these different diagrams with like legacy gameplay, um, brand synergy, uh, and she has that X factor that I'm I'm looking for. I feel like she would be one of the one of the cooler um, one of the cooler characters in in a in Marvel vs. Capcom 4. All right, so next one. Now that I brought Magneto. I have to just put him in this list. It's unacceptable that he was not an infinite. This man, if I can find him, is one of the coolest antagonists. Uh, I love his backstory. I love everything about him. Um, I wanted to put uh, Professor X in this game as well. 
maybe he would like be in uh, his chair and he could do some moves and stuff, but I, I don't think a lot of people would agree with me on that. So I'm just going to put that in my own personal list later on. You know, after Magneto, speaking of the X-Men, we need Cyclops. I think Cyclops is such a cool character in that he mirrors Ryu as kind of like the starter character for uh, uh, for people who are just like beginning the game. And um, I don't really see that on the, the Marvel side that much. And Cyclops, you know, um, he's a Shoto and he's, he's such an iconic character of the X-Men with, you know, He's the leader of the X-Men. He's appeared in the X-Men 97 and the, all those movies. And uh, I, I just find it strange he's, he wasn't in the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I don't know what Marvel was thinking then because uh, Capcom wanted to include him in the game, but that fell through. Got a little bit of Marvel out of the way. Let's go back to Capcom. So with Capcom, the next one I picked is Dante. Dante is a um, very popular character. Comes from Devil May Cry. He's very iconic to the modern modern era of Capcom. Devil May Cry 5 came out a couple years ago. Man, that was that was a while ago actually. And uh, he was in the last two games. And removing him at this point would be really weird. So this is a this this is more of a more of a legacy pick, if anything. But I feel like would be really cool would be Cecil from from Ghost Trick Phantom Detect. So in the game, you die. Uh, spoiler alert! I mean, this he's literally dead here. Uh, sorry if my face is blocking the view, but he's literally dead over there, and. Um, and, and he solved puzzles by like possessing stuff and uh, and whatnot. And uh, I feel like he would be a really interesting pick gameplay wise with um, MVC. And uh, let's see if I can find him. Man, do they not have him on this website? I guess they don't. Wow. Sorry, I just got Adam to this list. Let's, what's the funniest picture we can find of him? All right, we got we got our, we got Cecil, we got Cecil here, ready to ready to possess some stuff. I'm looking at my list here. I forgot how to pronounce Amaterasu, Amaterasu, the wolf from Okami. So the Okami wolf, uh, Okami is such a unique game with its uh, with its art style and its gameplay. I feel like it it needs representation in some form. And I feel Amaterasu would, would be a good pick. Akira. So, for those of you who don't know, Akira is from a more obscure game in Capcom's library called called Rival Schools. Now, the thing with Rival Schools is that, like Dark Dark Stalkers, it's not a game that's around today in uh, any new format or anything like that. But. Uh, Akira was included in Street Fighter V as the first kind of guest character. Well, not really, but just kind of like a sister series to uh, Street Fighter. Well, not Street. I don't know what I'm saying, but uh, Capcom. And um, I feel like it would be fun to continue that that tradition and put her in uh, in Marvel vs. Capcom because there's there's air combos in rival schools as well. And I feel like her playstyle would transfer over to Marvel vs. Capcom a bit. Uh, and it would just be a fun inclusion. You know, uh, I always love seeing more fighting game reps. Alright, so this one, a lot of people have been asking for, and I believe would be a pretty cool uh, inclusion to the game, uh, would be Asura. So if you don't know, Asura is a really unique game in which you play as kind of like this god-like being. And there's a lot of quick time events, but the game is kind of built around those events. And um, I just think the gameplay potential would be super cool. And uh, speaking of Asura, uh, the reason why I didn't include Akuma is that I believe they would kind of have a similar gameplay as uh, Ryu. 
but uh, I think Akuma's crossed over with Asura before, and Asura could be kind of like that devilish character. It's not the same thing, obviously, but I'm I'm just I'm just trying to like reason more why I think they would be kind of cool in the game. A lot of people have been asking for Asura, so they're pretty high on like popularity lists and stuff. And um, I, I feel like it's uh, th their game came out like. I have a while ago, but I feel like they're due to be in the game. All right, next one. This one's a classic character. Uh, this one's more of a legacy pick than anything. And that would be Drider Hiryu. So, um, not really the most popular Capcom series. A little bit niche these days. There is a recent game that Actually, I don't think it was recent, which is called Strider. But, you know, I feel like they've been in there since Marvel vs. Capcom 1. Uh, they've been in every subsequent game. It's kind of like, here's your spot, grandfather kind of deal. Uh, I feel like there would be outlash if people, if he was removed from the game. And recently, in Marvel uh, Street Fighter V, there's been a character that's kind of been connected to hear you. Uh, playing him in the Street Fighter universe, so Would be pretty cool another um, Capcom character before we get back to Marvel. So this one uh, I feel is a bit it's a bit uh, a Bit easy to put them in Albert Wesker Like I said Resident Evil is really big. I feel like having the big bad of Resident Evil even though he's not there in the recent games would be really cool and I would prefer him over Nemesis because Nemesis is a character that's kind of trapped in one game and I don't believe his new redesign would translate well to like to uh to a new game you know Nemesis he's all right you know I I think we've had enough of him okay I, I, okay so back to Mar Marvel <laughs> we left off on the X-Men I believe this is a character that fulfills so many of the pillars that I have that they're they're so iconic to the series and just the X-Men in general. Storm, pretty easy pick in my opinion. She her gameplay is pretty cool. Like she has that X factor similar to Scarlet Witch. She's one of the most popular X-Men. Um She's been in, like, every Marvel game except Infinite for obvious reasons. You know, it, it just makes sense, so. Wolverine is another pick that is pretty, pretty easy to make. You can't make a game like this without Wolverine. It would be not a good one, but... <laughs> I think with Wolverine, he's just so iconic. He has so many different variations of him. Maybe like a version that focuses more on him and Logan or whatever. But from a gameplay perspective, I would like for him to kind of remain the same. He's he's just iconic in his his Wolverine way. And, uh, you, you can't you can't change perfection. No. Okay, next one. This is a really big favorite of mine. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is such a cool character. I really love his gameplay, and I feel like he's one of those sleeper Marvel characters that's super cool, but doesn't have a lot of uh, outward fan support due to the fact that he's already kind of had two movies and he's been in his prime a bit. Uh, I really hope they add him to the main MCU because I really love his whole shtick of being this agent of vengeance and staring into people's souls and destroying them and well not destroying them but just kind of punishing them for their past sins is it like i've read a few over uh, ghost rider comics and they're pretty metal at times it's he's a such a cool character you know um i would just want the classic johnny blaze version but if they put in one of the more recent renditions of ghost rider that would be kind of cool to spice things up as long as he has his whips and his uh motorcycle and he takes people down to hell uh he's literally the embodiment of those memes you know the ones i'm talking about where it's just like a skeleton like with a gun you know like the grim reaper and he's just like 
Yeah, I didn't wash the dishes. Yeah. And uh, I just think that the fact that he's like, he's so edgy in a way that it loops back around to being badass. And I think that's what makes him so cool to me. And I feel like he should be a staple since uh, appearing in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. So that's my take on Ghost Rider. Next one, this is hard. This, this one's really hard. I want to include a Guardians of the Galaxy rep, but I didn't know which one to pick. Originally, I had Groot in mind because I thought his gameplay would be kind of cool and Groot's kind of like an iconic character. But then I thought about it and it would just make a lot of people upset because Groot isn't exactly the most iconic character. And while there's some other picks, I don't feel like they would be as fun. Except uh, Rocket Raccoon. You know, Rocket Raccoon, he's already been in the series in the past two games. I feel like he's kind of earned his spot in a way. And I feel like he would differentiate himself from a character like Star-Lord, where, um, you know, we already have like a lot of characters his proportion. Um, but with a character like Rocket Raccoon, you know, they're pretty popular in both the MCU and just kind of in general. Oh, I guess this solves both my problems. Yeah, either Rocket Raccoon or Groot, maybe just combine them as one fighter. You know, I feel like they've kind of, they're just a duo now in a way, but I could see why people would want to separate them and I could make an exception if both of them were included. Um, I don't know if I'd want Gamora back. I feel like she's all right. Add some, she adds like, like a connection to Thanos, but <laughs> come on, like Rocket and Groot, like you, you're telling me you, your rep would want to be Gamora instead of like either one of those two. All right, so I'm just gonna fin finish off my Marvel picks and then we'll finish off Capcom and then we'll get the DLC. Okay, next one. I was speaking of Spider-Man characters earlier. And while J. Jonah Jameson was pretty tempting to put on this list, I might put him down closer at the bottom, but you know, it's, there's, Spider-Man has so many iconic villains and I feel like Venom needs a break even though I would love to see him because I love Venom. The, the fact that Venom is very, I wouldn't say similar character design wise to Spider-Man, but you know, but you know what I mean? Like he's supposed to kind of be like the, the this evil inversion of Spider-Man. And I feel like it would be cooler to have a character such as the Green Goblin, who's actually like Spider-Man's arch nemesis, you know? I feel like Venom is cool and all, but the fact that Green Goblin is, is uh, kind of weird. Uh, you know, I feel like they could do a lot of fun stuff with this glider. I've heard people say it wouldn't work with the glider, but I just make his moveset centered around the glider. Make him throw, like, pumpkin bombs. And, like, like he could do, like, a one-two thing, and then he could flip his glider upside down and then just, like, jump on, jump off of it, and then, like, hit someone, and it would, get, like, go up in the air. And, like, there, there's a lot of creativity with this kind of stuff, you know? And sometimes you don't even need to look at the comics, and you don't need to be beholden the source material you can just be like well if he just like i don't know he just goblined everyone and just he was, he was the green goblin and yeah so spider-man needs more characters in general i believe he's such an iconic character and the fact that you know he's barely had it he's like he's like the he's like the zelda series in smash bros where half the characters are just variations of link uh, two are just like versions of Zelda. One's a clone of Captain Falcon, you know. Except, uh, Spider-Man just doesn't have any characters. And arguably, I'd say that's worse. Alright, so my last character for Marvel would have to be, before DLC, mind you, would be someone who I think would be a super obvious pick, Daredevil. Daredevil is such a cool character. Uh, I'm just gonna put him next to Spider-Man, but he's such a cool character. I feel like he would play really fun too, and I don't know, it, he's just become more iconic in recent years with the TV show and everything, and he was in like the Spider-Man movie, and he was also in She-Hulk, and he just, I don't know what 
nothing else to say about it, you know? It would just be really fun to have. Okay, back to Capcom. So, let's see what we have so far. Um, oh yeah, so this is going to be an odd pick. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this. But I am going to food. Actually, I can't find them on this site because they're so new that it's literally impossible. So, we're just going to go straight to Google. Okay, so if you've been following Capcom these past few months... <laughs> the pregnancy test. Um, you'll know about this game called uh, Pragmata. It's coming out. It takes place on the moon. We don't know that much about it. I feel like the character from this game, her name is Diana. She would be super cool. You know why? Because she and this other guy who I don't know the name of would be a really cool like dual fighter concept. You know? I don't know the gameplay of this game. I don't know what it's about, but just the concept of it and the fact that they're both robots is really interesting to me. And I feel like having a space in the roster for it, like a new Capcom IP, would really like kind of flesh out the history of Capcom. And a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this, obviously, because they're not even an established character. And like, I totally get it. Like, I totally get it. But in a game like this, it would just be really cool. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to some more conventional character picks. So, next one uh, is another Darkstalkers character. And originally I was going to pick Felicia. I'm going to have to pick on someone else. And this character is one that not a lot of people are expecting, but it would be a fun legacy pick. And uh, Sasquatch. There's been speculation that Sasquatch was originally intended to be kind of like the face of Dark Stalkers. And in a way, it would be kind of funny for it to come full circle for her. I'm um, for Sasquatch, sorry, not her. <laughs> to be in the game. <coughs> uh, oh, I didn't realize my face was there. Oops. For Sasquatch, they're right here. To be in the game with uh, Morrigan. And. Uh, I don't really have anything else other to say than I feel like their gameplay would be super cool. And um, it would be a lot different than Felicia and kind of like the character designs. And that, see, that's what I'm kind of focusing on is trying to include a variety of characters who not also embody different gameplay types, but also just like that X factor I'm talking about. I feel like Sasquatch kind of has that. He kind of has the sauce, you know. Alright, so the last character I picked for Capcom. It's not the most, um... Not the most surprising one, but I feel like he would be a welcome addition back after being gone in the game. And that's Beautiful Joe. Again, another tiny character. Uh, you notice how I didn't include Arthur on this list. I feel like Arthur's pretty cool, but... I feel like he, he's had two games, you know, and he, like, he's actually had a game pretty recently, but he's definitely, like, more legacy Capcom character. Beautiful Joe is, like, he oozes style. He's a character that I feel would really show off kind of the difference between Marvel versus Capcom, you know. Like, same with Amaterasu or Cecil, you know, compared to these more photorealistic characters. I feel like you need a mix of both in order to showcase the uniqueness of kind of each series. Because if you don't, then it just kind of turns into a bland game where everyone kind of looks similar. And while they may be iconic, they, they're they just not what I would say... They, unique, in a sense. Okay, now, now that we're done with our cast of characters here, there's 20 and 20. I'm going to add 10 DLC characters. And first one, I think, is a must and would sell a lot of season passes is none other than Blade. 
Blade is a character that the MCU owes its like whole existence to. It's like one of the first Marvel movies that had really good critical reception and everything. And also Blade is just a, such a cool character. Like just just think of the 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 interactions he would have with like Dante or like the Monster Hunter and <laughs> like he hunts vampires. You know? He's a, he he just he's just so cool. And his moveset would be so cool, and it just his legacy would be cool. His popularity is like off the charts. Like if we're looking at this list here, like there's a Blade movie in the works right now. I don't know if it's gonna get released, but he like fulfills all of these to like a hundred percent. He's just that cool. Blade should be in Marvel vs. Capcom 4. And the reason I saved him for DLC is because. Marvel and Capcom would know this and they would save him because he he doesn't deserve to be on the base roster because he's above the base roster Sorry, he's a he's above the base roster and um, it, it would just be really cool to have him in Okay, now we're gonna do one DLC from Capcom And that DLC is another dark dark stalkers character. I just think this series is pretty cool and you know, kind of tying in the blade. He's not, he's not a werewolf hunter, but you know, you know, you know, what I mean, Morbius though, that would be funny. I'm going to say that for later, but anyway, <laughs> um, uh, if I can find him, his name is John Talbane, Jeff the Land Shark. All right. This list might be longer than I thought it was going to be. But here is John Talbane. Kind of an oddball pick, same with Sasquatch, but having those kind of more anthropomorphic characters in the game, I feel like adds some more moveset variety, and also just like, just flushes out the gameplay variety. A lot of people have been asking for John Talbane for the longest time, and I feel like that's why they would include him as DLC. So, yeah. <laughs> Next one I have is... An iconic character that I feel like would cause an outrage if he wasn't included. I don't think he would be the most necessary. It would be Deadpool. So Deadpool, very popular. He's had three movies. He's in everything. You know, he has that whole shtick where he breaks the fourth wall. I originally wanted to include Gwenpool, but I feel like that would be kind of a disservice to both um, Gwen Stacy and Deadpool, even though they're not related to each other. I mean, like, come on. Like, the character is clearly inspired by both. Like, even if they aren't in the story. And to have her would just be kind of like... You know, it, it wouldn't be... It wouldn't be the best choice, in my opinion. So, Though, I say this, Gwenpool could be a skin for Deadpool. I don't know how they would make it work, or if it would be even be physically possible, but... There's that. And speaking of which, I just wanted to talk about how I was originally going to put Gwen Stacy and Miles Morales, or one of the two on this list for DLC. But my fear is that they would play way too similar to Spider-Man. And, and I feel like having a more unique Spider-Man character instead of having Spider-Man twice would be more interesting. So that's my rationale for that. All right, so my next DLC character is one that I fully believe Capcom would do only because they would see the dollar signs, would be Virgil. So Virgil, he's the brother of Dante. Uh, they have this rivalry together, but also he's uh, top tier in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and he's very popular in that game. And uh, I just, he, he's like kind of like the Akuma of Marvel vs. Capcom, in my opinion now. And I feel like there would be a lot of hype for him if he was to be released. And that's why they would save him for DLC, you know. Uh, that's the main reason why I'm including these characters as DLC. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be in the base roster. I'm saying that logistically, Capcom, like Marvel and Capcom would be like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta sell these guys for extra money. You know, they're that cool. Next one is... Jessica Jones. 
So Jessica Jones is pretty cool. She's like, uh, she's like a, kind of like a PI. She used to be a superhero, but now she's a PI. Uh, I was debating over whether to put her or Luke Cage in the in the DLC, but I feel like she would add like a nice bit of variety from this uh, kind of <laughs> this um, all male uh, DLC lineup we've had so far, and it's. It would be cool to have her in, and I feel like they could, um, she's kind of like a pick that synergizes well with Daredevil, kind of street level heroes, sort of, and I feel like they could make her design interesting in a way similar to Phoenix, right? It would be cool to see how they would be able to make a move set for her, which is primarily why I put her on this list. Um, I feel like the gameplay potential when you don't have a well-defined kind of gameplay you're looking for, it becomes exponentially larger with a character like this. And she would probably only be around for this game, hypothetically, but I just think it would be super cool. Zero from Mega Man X. I mean, if we're not going to include X, I think Zero would be good to include as a representative of the X series. I feel like having Mega Man and X be kind of redundant even though they're different characters um they're still ostensibly uh mega man <laughs> at the end of the day zero differentiates himself from mega man enough to where he's also a hype character <clears throat> he has a pretty loyal fan base he just looks cool as hell and while there's no x games being made right now like going back to my list here the fact that um, he comes from a series named, named Mega Man X, already gives him the X Factor, so. No brand synergy, lots of legacy, cool gameplay, and very popular. Alright, next Marvel character, Moon Knight. I mean, what can I say about Moon Knight? He's just, like, going back again to my pillars, he has that X Factor, he has those two forms! That perfectly synergizes just creating interesting gameplay. The, his brand, you know, there's been a show about him. He's pretty popular overall, and he just has a cool legacy. And I feel like representing him, uh, you know, maybe he could have a gimmick where he switches between his two forms, and like one's more common collected and the other one's more aggressive. And that would be super cool. That would be really cool. So yeah, Moon Knight would sell a lot of a lot of passes, though. So. All right, this one is a bit of a fan favorite, and uh, I'm only going to include it because I believe it would probably break the internet in a sense, or at least the fighting game community. Lady Dimitrescu. You know, when she was first revealed, there was a lot of memes made about her because she's like this big, tall lady who's, um, you know, vampire. Uh, I mean, you've seen them all. I don't need to explain this. I feel like the prevalence of Resident Evil has gotten to the point where they justify having like four characters. And you know, Street Fighter has three, but come on, Resident Evil, like Resident Evil, I. I, I, I swear, that's why I'm picking it. That, that's the only reason why I'm picking it. No other, no other reason. No other reason. No other reason. Time for the final Marvel character. Now, I kind of debated on this one a bit. And I was kind of deciding between the Punisher and Black Bolt. And after thinking about it, I think I'm gonna go with the Punisher. Now with Black Bolt, he's a cool character. He would add like a lot of cool gameplay variety, but and he was in that MCU movie or in a cameo, but if we're being honest, he's just not really hit the mainstream in terms of what like I would wanna see for a last DLC character. For the Punisher though. The Punisher, he's had like his own show, he's been 
uh, in the Daredevil show. He's an iconic character on the back of pickup trucks, <laughs> but um, uh, he's just a really interesting pick in a way, because the reason why this whole series exists is because of the Punisher. You know, Marvel collaborated with Capcom to make a Punisher beat-em-up game. And to see that legacy go back into Marvel vs. Capcom as the last Marvel character, it would just bring it full circle. Especially after this this collection that's come out recently has reignited interest in Marvel vs. Capcom. You know? It's, um... Uh, I feel like... It, it would just be poetry, you know? It would, just, it would be like, history rhymes. And the Punisher, he would just have, he just has such a cool legacy. And while I don't personally think his character is like the most badass guy ever invented or whatever, the uh, the only issue I could see it uh, with the Punisher is making him more, like kind of toning down his more vicious aspects. He's, Cause he's pretty brutal and, uh, but you know, this is, this is like, not a realistic game series. They could do what they did in Snake and Smash Bros and just give him guns like Dante too, where he just like bang, 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 bang. Yeah, the Punisher. So what do I have for my last Capcom pick? This one, I feel is, is a pretty good one. And the last one I'm going to pick, my last pick is the Arisen from Dragon's Dogma. So Dragon's Dogma 2 came out recently, and it's gotten pretty good reviews, and Capcom has said they want to make more Dragon's Dogma games in the future. I feel like they're kind of like an Avatar kind of role, sort of uh, like uh, the Monster Hunter, but just the, the builds you can do in the game and the variety they could add might put them on the same level in terms of popularity, and I feel like they there would be a lot of room to work with. and. I feel like Dragon's Dogma having representation in Marvel vs. Capcom wouldn't be an essential thing, but it would just be an interesting way to kind of cap off the DLC by introducing a character that's kind of like the future of Marvel, I, I'm, of Capcom, in a way. And yeah, that's why I include them on this list. Yep, this is my list for the next Marvel vs. Capcom game. If you want to see some more... Um, some more picks that I would personally like. Feel free to continue watching. All right, so I already know who I'm gonna put on this list. I, I've been wanting to mention them all, like, for this whole list, but I haven't yet. And that's Gambit, you know. I didn't include them on the list because I was trying to be unbiased. You know, I know they're a really cool X-Men, but I just don't see them being, you know, that important in the modern era, which is why I include them here. I was heavily debating switching out Jessica Jones with Gambit, <laughs> but I think for the health of this list, I feel like Gambit overall is kind of a more niche character, even though he's a really popular X-Men. He has such a cool gameplay. He has such cool gameplay, and I would love to see him in 3D. And I would happily, ha <laughs> I would happily exchange, um, you know. One of these... No, no, I wouldn't. But that's why it was so hard to make this list, you know? You got cool... There's so many cool characters on both sides. And there's so many you can include because, like, being realistic here, I think 50 characters is kind of pushing it. Especially considering, like, the cost of gameplay development. And even just, like, technical issues that might arise. But if I were to include... All these characters, uh, I would want to include Gambit as well. Now, going back to what we were talking about earlier, I think uh, Cody would be super cool as the new mayor of Metro City. He would be uh, he would be a really cool pick in the sense that he's also a rep from Final Fight, and you just get that dual representation and him. Talking with Hagar would be super cool. You know, I just think it would be a cool crossover. But speaking of Street Fighter characters, there's one I can't, um, I can't uh, 
Stress would be a really cool character. And that would be... I'm not joking, it's, it's only because I like Guile in Street Fighter. Like, I know he has a boring moveset, but what can I say? <laughs> um, jokes aside, I'm just going to put... I'm going to put JJJ here as well. You know, I feel like he would be a really good joke character. He would add to the Spider-Man representation. His moveset would be so funny, like a mixture of Deadpool, but also being like super good and top tier. He would just have so much potential. I mean, imagine him interacting with different Marvel and Capcom characters and just like, that's Spider-Man! Or it's like, or he's like talking with Ghost Rider and it's like, oh, you, you're a hothead, son. And it, it would just be super funny. And imagine him being on the same team as Spider-Man and he's like, and he's just upset that he has to be close to Spider-Man when he gets called out and stuff. J. Jonah Jameson would be hilarious to have in this game. In fact, I would consider removing one of the Marvel characters just to have him in, you know. But that's not up to me. Sony fell for it again. They could, well, I don't know who owns the rights to Morbius game-wise, but, you know, having another Spider-Man character, but also just the fact, you know, the whole Morbius meme, his hyper combo could be it's morbing time, you know. It, it, it's stupid. It would synergize with Blade, though. Let's be real. Imagine if they came together as like a two pack. That would be kind of cool, right? Or maybe they just come together as one character. And no, you, you know, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stop right here before I say too much. Uh, uh you know, I I like Luke in um, Street Fighter Six, but I don't think I would put him on my favorites. Same with Miles Morales, and uh, Venom, obviously, another Spider-Man character. Those are kind of my honorable mentions. Uh, I'm probably missing some super obvious fan favorite character that I've just not addressed at all, and I'm sorry if I've done that. There's just so many characters to look through that it can be hard to know who's important or not, you know. Like, I would have loved to talk about Taskmaster and more about Gwenpool and just to add them to the roster, but, you know, there's only so many characters you can focus on. Like, if I were in charge of making the roster and it was my, like, just, if I was really selfish and I only included characters I wanted, half of the characters would just be X-Men, because I like the X-Men. And Street Fighter. It would just be X-Men versus Street Fighter 2. You know. Before I end this list, I just want to talk about a few characters that didn't make it that I want to explain myself on. So, uh, there's some fan favorite ones like Sentinel and um, uh, Shura Gorath. I forgot the name. You know, those are cool characters. Same with Dormammu. But... I feel like their relevance with, you know, Sentinel and the, the green tentacle guy is it's not the same as it once was, and Shuma Gorath is more of like a joke character, like, I, I really like their gameplay, but I just can't really justify putting them in the game. And uh, I don't have as much of a nostalgia for the series as other people have, so they might be on their list, or like Sentinel and uh, Shuma might be on their list, but they're just not on mine. I just want to explain that. You know, there's some other one-off characters that on the Capcom side, like Sonson -Son or Jin. Again, more obscure characters. They're not really like, they've been in Marvel games before, but they're not like, you know, Fan, fan favorites, does that make sense? I mean, I'd like to include Rogue, just to go with Gambit. But, yeah, making a list like this is hard. And the fact that I was able to just make up my mind and put these characters down, I think that'll be it for me. So, yeah, that's my list for characters I would like to see in the new Marvel vs. Capcom game. 
Uh, they're probably going to do something unexpected. Like, we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. There's probably uh, going to be more meddling by Disney. And they're kind of mandate more MCU characters. But in a perfect world, I would like to see just more representation of the Marvel Universe overall. In terms of just popularity and uh, gameplay. So... With that, you know, thanks for watching this video. It's been a while since I've uploaded the last. But, you know, I, I've been getting back into it. And uh, I hope to play more Marvel vs. Capcom in the future. So let me know what picks you would like. And what picks you're completely offended that I chose at all. And I'll see you next time. Bye.